Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Vangelis stepping back in aesthetic time to check out another one of Mastermind Creation's Night Morpher releases. Limited to 500 pieces worldwide, this is the awakening version of their Airborne Squad design. It's a preview piece of sorts, released to look like a prototype while constructed in production quality. Since three obvious color schemes will be releasing over the next couple of months, this guy is really meant to showcase the sculpt and engineering. So let's grab our joysticks and begin the journey. The alternate mode follows Guido Guidi's line art quite closely. This means you're getting a crazy bat-like steampunk flying machine with six wings and a retro-futuristic Wright Brothers aesthetic. It is absolutely nuts and definitely not for everyone, but it is very close to the Hearts of Steel Seeker design, so with that intention in mind, I gotta give it a thumbs up. True to Mastermind's strengths, the thin and sharp edges on the sculpt are very finely made. There are small rivets everywhere, and a great focus on crisp surface detail abounds in this release. Every angle yields some great sculpt work, and I really look forward to seeing this done in full color. The prototype grays of the Awakening version showcase the beveling and textures, but Screecher, Stormer, and Warper will definitely highlight individual details more so than this. All those small, sharp edges also mean you totally do not want to wear a woolen sweater while handling this toy. Nothing feels like it'll snap in a moment's notice, but you will want to be aware of things like the propellers and wingtips, and not be too careless in handling the toy. Transforming the Airborne Squad member yields the most satisfying Mastermind Creations conversion to date. Everything tabs, locks, or slots into place for the vehicle mode, and undoing those connections for the robot mode does not feel risky in any way. The only way to snag or damage anything is to do parts of the transformation wildly out of order. Mastermind really found a balance between complexity and durability this time, far more than with Cyclops. If I had one problem, it is that the feet and wings don't have any clearly defined locking point for robot mode. While there's a great automorph effect driven by the wings, I wish they clicked into the robot's back rather than just rest into some guidance grooves. Regardless, I have transformed this guy a lot and have yet to feel worried about any particular step. In the realm of intricate conversions, it's one of my favorites in a while. Once again, this guy is pushing towards Guido's Hearts of Steel line art with a few extra dollops of crisp surface detail. While the Awakening version is rendered in a flat prototype palette, things as simple as using two tones of plastic against each other highlight a lot of the great vents, divots, and nodules that cover his body. The Airborne Squad member has a very old-timey Regal look to him as well. He's got slim and gaunt facial features with his pointy nose and chin. He also has broad shoulders and, if you swivel things correctly, a set of faux coattails that all remind me of a gentleman's jacket. This aesthetic is finished off by his fine pointed shoes and elegantly gesturing hands. Oh, he's also still covered in pointy parts as well, which both add a European vampiric element to his silhouette, and as I mentioned before, should be treated with a little bit of care. Sliding out in a jigsaw puzzle manner, the two hip skirt pieces can also be wielded as melee weapons. Pay attention to the caution sheet and be sure to slide this out. Don't yank them or things will become a tad tragic. The two blades can also unite using their jigsaw connections, though the fit is not perfect and can come apart a little easily. Whether you use them as steampunk scimitars or an antiquitously twisted batleth, this is a really cool play option that I did not at all expect until it was shown to me at TFCon 2012. Stepping up the play option factor exponentially are the cannon options. The Awakening version of this toy comes with all three ranged weapon pairings, while the colored versions will only include one apiece. You have Screecher's Gatling Guns, Stormer's Rail Gun Thingies, and Warper's Twin Cannons. These mount easily to the robot's forearms. Not immediately obvious is that they can also mount to the inside of the forearms, which means the Awakening version comes ready to use four firearms at once. Even less obvious, unless you scrutinize the connections, is the fact that these guns can also be plugged together. I didn't get what was going on until I got a direct message from that damn P.A. delinquent who taunted me with his discovery. The sliding dark gray pegs I had been staring at are, in fact, a means for the Airborne Squad member to hold these weapons in his hands. That means he can actually use all six guns at once. This is a very cool easter egg feature, especially for the Awakening version, as he is the only one to come with the full gamut of weaponry in one box. Speaking of gamuts, let's talk about the posability gamut found within this guy. His head is on a really good expressive ball joint, especially if this guy's going to be uh, Starscream or Screecher. Uh, I never said Starscream. You never heard me say Starscream. What are you talking about? You can have him tilt his head and do these kind of like sadistic look at you in a leering kind of way, sort of uh, sort of poses, a leering pose, if you will. The only problem is it's it's a little bit hard to get your fingers around his head um, because of the uh, the things on the sides and the canopy in the back. So. It's not impossible, but there's just only certain ways you can fit your uh, your thumb and forefinger in there. Um, that's a ball joint. 
That's the only ball joint we're going to be talking about. Because everything else on this dude... Oh. Oh. Detents everywhere. Ratchets everywhere. This isn't a ratchet joint. Neither is this. But otherwise... Oh. It's really solid. And it doesn't feel like the kind of ratchet joint that might wear out. I think... I mean, I've only had this guy for a few days, but... I doubt that those ratchet joints are going to strip themselves apart. They feel too solid, and this guy is too not heavy like Cyclops to potentially wear them out. Uh, speaking of his elbows, there is only one uh, intentional joint, but it bends pretty far. You can disengage his bicep if you really want to have a second joint there, but it's kind of unnecessary. And his wrists are on... Uh, okay, they're on ball joints. But um, they're not really working like ball joints specifically. They work... Sort of like a ball joint, but it's be it's because of the transformation hinge. Just don't don't call me on that ball joint thing, man. The, if they find out the toy reviewer committee, they're gonna they're gonna give me a strike. Um, this up and down motion is quite helpful because if you uh, want to put something in his hands, it allows you to get a little bit of extra clearance around the the huge square cuffs of his forearms. And then uh, if you like pull it out slightly, you can bend this back down, etc., etc. It's helpful. It's helpful all around. Um, his waist joint clicks. Uh, he also has two sub little sliver waist joints. Um, each of these pieces of hip skirt armor has its own sliding joint, and it means that they're able to swivel independently of one another and not get in each other's way. So you can just put them wherever you want. You can have them out on the sides. I prefer them in the back so they have that coattail look, and they have their own little bit of clickiness as well. Everything on this dude clicks. Check out his hips. Oh. Ooh. Ah, okay, that's just a swivel. But otherwise, wow. Uh, his knees um, are double-jointed. They are definitely double-jointed. I'm going to twist them in a funny direction so you can see how they work. There's a... Well, now you can see what's going on. There's some mech alive in there. Um, they're also double-jointed, so you can really curl them up if you need to. It's a little bit tricky with all the stuff in the way and these huge things on his heels, but I like that the option is there. And this Mech Alive thing, I love it. This is one of my favorite gimmicks that I think a lot of people didn't really care for in, uh, the movie toy lines from the live-action Transformers movies, but it's so cool. Uh, the only downside is, like, you know, as I've mentioned before, don't grab this or this and then move it, because you might strip the gears a little bit, but I like this a lot. Gives it a real cool bit of life. Uh, mech life, if you will. Perhaps even a live mech life. Uh, finally, this dude has got some stuff going on with his feet. Um, his heels have a little bit of tilting, and they can move forward and backward. They can actually fold, like this thing can fold all the way up here. I don't really see a reason to, though, because if you fold the heel down, then it doesn't hit the ground. This round thing hits the ground instead, so... I'm not sure what's going on back there. Otherwise, uh, the, the toe is... This thing has an enormous range of motion. The only downside being that there's no place to lock it in. Uh, so you can't really easily get him to have his feet totally flat on the ground. But you don't need him to have his feet totally flat on the ground. Look at this. I just put him down. That's not totally flat, but he's still balancing totally fine. Uh, all the surfaces down here are really good at establishing a solid base uh, for standing as, as wide-legged as you want. And uh, he he's able to keep it up. I don't know why he'd ever do this, but he's able to keep it up. And uh, as was shown to me at TFCon 2012, this dude can assume some semblance of that their classic... Well, I can't believe it's already classic. The Iron Man movie poster pose that everyone likes to put every toy in the history of everything since that movie into. And you can also do that with this guy to some degree and have him, you know, punch the ground and look up. Or in this guy's case push his Gatling gun into the ground and and look up. Anyway, I like that posing this guy is not a hassle because he's able to pretty much be put down in most any position, uh, even in this crazy awkward one he's standing okay until I tap him like that. And it's not a battle to get him to stand up. It's it's quite easy, it's quite natural, and given the complexity of this guy and, and the humongous uh, pair of wings on his back, I find that pretty impressive. So... Well done, Airborne Squad member. Well done indeed. You get a thumbs Gatling gun up. Anyway, the Airborne Squad design comes with the caveat that its primary design directive is to emulate Guido Guidi's line art as closely as possible. Keeping that in mind, this figure is solid on a basic level. He's poseable, sharply sculpted, and decently durable, given both the necessities of thin and pointy edges, and Mastermind Creation's habit of pushing the envelope of how crisp its plastics can become without crossing the line of fragility. 
As long as you heed the caution sheet and show a small modicum of care, an average copy of this toy should survive any level of casual play. Thin points of plastic aside, the main problem I have with the toy is that, while it locks together impressively in either mode, the feet and wings just feel a bit too loose in robot mode. If the wings could solidly clip down after the automorph and the feet had a few soft locking points to preserve their great motion but easily assume a standing position, I'd have no major qualms whatsoever. Moving past its basics, this figure is layered with loving design work. It is clear to me that its engineers not only tried to cram function into every millimeter of its mass, but had a great deal of fun doing so. This could have been a much simpler toy, and its gimmicks and easter eggs feel like the result of a designer finishing all that needed to be done, and then saying, I'm not satisfied yet. That is what made me fall in love with this figure. It taps into one of the things most unique to independent and third-party design, the hypothetical ability to ignore limitation and operate on instinct and desire. The Commander and Annihilator had their under-the-trailer hand storage, and Cyclops had his transtector port, but the Airborne Squad pushed the idea of hidden features and unnecessary yet fun easter eggs much farther. If Hexatron has even half as many secrets buried within his six modes, I will be a happy camper consultant. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelus. The Awakening version of this toy is probably pretty hard to find, but the three colorful versions are on the way, and I am excited to line them up on my desk. I'll catch you later in the bright future where I'm sure nobody has asked me to dunk this robot in water or throw his vehicle mode off a rooftop. Seriously, for crying out loud, do it to yours. I'm already in the club. Why don't you come and join me?